They shoot Gambit to protect their designs as the central power battery explodes and they die. Out steps no man, but he did wear a mask. Steps on the lantern ring and it after my cast scaling video dropped, I expectedly received a ton of criticism about my scaling of the character of Cosmic Armor Superman. Now, I'm the kind of guy who's pretty open to new ideas and concepts, so I'll always take a look to see if I can better myself with those criticisms whenever it comes to my scaling. But after I posted my video, they came. Like moths to a flame, it began. Can I survive the criticism? Can Lumos beat the allegations of just being a money-hungry YouTuber who doesn't do any research? Or do I go full Ronnie Radke and absolutely obliterate these people with facts? Let's find out today by looking at the best criticisms of my Cosmic Armor Superman video from the totality of the DC community I've received so far. What's up guys, it's me Lumos Theramax and I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell up top, as well as become a member of my channel down low. It comes with all sorts of perks like discords, emojis, badges, and you help me decide future content like this video, and get access to pretty much all of my content early. But with all the YouTuber BS aside, let's get straight into whether or not I can beat the allegations when it comes to Cosmic Armor Superman. Argument 1. Cosmic Armor Superman can heal himself if he wants to because he has all stories that exist and knows absolutely everything. Well, here's your answer. His stories couldn't repair himself as he was wounded beyond repair by the analysis of a fellow monitor. Also, the combined consciousness of any of these stories wouldn't have the information at this time to repair such a complex construct such as the Thought Robot, or at least there's no evidence of that at this time. Superman, although intelligent, still needed the plans to recreate the Miracle Machine, so he's not fixing technology on a level that was literally beyond the comprehension of a lot of the figures involved here. Argument 2. Mandrak's story continued, and thus the Cosmic Armor Superman story has to be continued as well. Look at the tombstone. It says to be continued. So, here's your answer. There's no evidence to support the claim that Cosmic Armor Superman or the Thought Robot is fixable or will return at all. Mandrak is returning as a continuation for sure, but the Tombstone was the concept for all stories to continue, even if Cosmic Armor Superman can't make it there himself. Superman will always continue on, and he proves so by saving Lois's, uh, Lois Lane's life afterwards. It's possible Cass does return later on, but we will need to see evidence of that like we did with Mandrak. So I'm pretty much calling cap on all of this for the time being because there's no evidence of Cass actually returning. Keep in mind, in the unexpected, we literally see the return of Mandrak and Cass does not show up during that event. So if you think Cass is alive or still functioning or out there or something along those lines, I guess he's just trolling to let Mandrak return and do pretty much nothing about it. But you would be a little bit out of character if you ask me. Argument 3. Other voids aren't the same as the Overvoid, and literally nothing exists past the Source Wall besides the Source, the Monitor Mind, and the Unknowable as it says on the map of the multiverse. Duh. This is heavily outdated information. There are many beings who can traverse the Overvoid nowadays, such as the Chronicler, the Judges of the Source, the Hands of the Source, Silkman, like every Angel, the Presence, uh, the Source, uh, pretty much everybody um, at the high ends can traverse these realms. Sometimes people refer to the Overvoid as the Void, especially in older canons, but that's not something that's like, unique only to older canons. Even Ultraman refers to the Overvoid as the Void in the Superman Beyond story. And plus, if you try to make this argument personally, I feel like you're lowballing the ability of Grant Morrison to draw a map because he just forgot all the extra voids that we don't find on the map of the multiverse. Like, obviously the map is outdated, but those voids were already included at the time of him writing that map. So I wouldn't downplay Grant Morrison like that. Even higher end beings such as the World Forger and Mar Novu in the Scott Snyder run do similar things as well. So it's not even like this is something that only happened in the past. It's still happening in the current meta. Argument four. Rox Ogama, a lamer version of Mandrake, Fought the Pax Day army and no sell their attacks, which included high-end angels. Clearly, Mandrak was beyond the Archangels, if this is the case. Well, that's funny. I remember a group of supermen from the multiverse and the Earth Green Lanterns killing that guy. I didn't see any angel directly attack him, but they did show up to guarantee the heroes of Earth could destroy Mandrak. Besides, the big boys like Michael and Lucifer aren't even there. 
uh, they didn't even consider this event important enough to show up because that army easily handled this problem. The angels, in all honesty, weren't even needed in that moment. Argument 5. The Presence was killed by Roxogama because Earth-51 was devoured by him. Nothing indicates that Mandrax scaled anywhere near the Presence, nor did he kill any god beyond the multiverse. He only affected gods within the God Sphere, and the Presence only has a connection to the Silver City. He typically isn't located there in 90% of time frames. We also have evidence that he is alive in the current day, with references in death metal and author statements, etc, etc. Assuming things off panel to this magnitude is some interesting theory crafting, though. Claims as large as blank person killed the presence off panel require actual proof, not assumptions of things that you can't prove at all, in my eyes at least. Besides, all worlds have the presence as God, not just one individual universe. The 1992 Spectre run that actually really drove this point home. All ep like all gods have an origin story, but like genuinely the presence is what comes from all of that. I don't understand how uh, this is something that some people still aren't really getting. Like it, it blows my mind that that's the case. Argument six. The DC multiversal map contains all of Marvel, Archie Sonic Comics, as well as the rest of fiction because there's an IGN interview where Grant Morrison gave an example of the Ori of Worlds itself containing all of them. Here's your answer. Grant Morrison here is just explaining how infinite multiverses work. He uses the examples of Marvel and Archie Sonic Comics uh, being other multiverses out there to give the scope of how vast multiversal structures are. The problem here is they don't have the rights to actually access or claim any of this whenever it comes to those verses. Let's look at how Grant actually used this concept versus how uh, the analogy went. Take for example what's said later in that interview, and uh, or even in another interview where it's more blatant. They simply represent the Marvel Universe. It's not literally the Marvel Universe. They don't have the Avengers, they have the Retaliators. Clearly, these are knockoff Marvel characters, not the real thing. Plus, it would be inside a singular universe, which is inside the localized 52 Ori of Worlds, and there's no proof because we have a list of those 52 worlds. DC doesn't have the rights to Marvel properties or Archie Sonic properties, so you can't 100% say uh, that they are contained inside of there canonically. No author transcends the copyrights of other companies without the original owner's permission. And Grant was simply using an example. Weird argument. Argument seven. But Lumos, a weakened Mandrak tanked the World Forge's chosen avatar's attacks. They had the powers of creation and destruction combined, weaponizing the World Forge's powers, which is essentially 10th metal. Cass defeated Mandrak. Mandrak, who tanked guys who had the power of the World Forge. Wonder Woman was amped by the World Forge, becoming Golden Wonder Woman, and defeated Batman Hatton. Clearly, Cosmic Armor Superman should be superior. So I've actually seen a lot of people say this, and this is probably the best argument I've seen form out of any of the criticisms I have, but I'm not entirely sold and here's why. The guy who has the powers of the World Forge itself verbatim says that their powers cannot destroy as those powers will literally not let them do so. So attacking Mandrak with them was literally pointless. Imagine using a feat of someone who isn't allowed to harm you using their powers like it's like the massive W of the century or of the multiverse or something. Even Bad Samaritan, with his wildly powerful destructive powers, does manage to harm Mandrak to the point he has to actually drain them of their stories to recover. That same guy also says that every layer of DC, the dark matter, the positive matter, and antimatter universe all bend to the fires of creation. And it's important to note that Mandrak was still affected by that level of power. Keep in mind, in the end of Death Metal, the characters were capable of entirely blatantly blowing up or having created entire tripartite multiversal structures, just as Perpetua had when she first arrived here in the first place. Golden Wonder Woman also had external amps as well, such as truth amps as well as connective energy amps that were absolutely insane, story amps as well, it was pretty wild. Even if Mandrak was weakened, he had the powers to leave the Dark Multiverse, which is already incredibly deep, difficult, defeat monitor tier opponents such as the Fuginaut, and he thought he could actively 
take over all of existence from that point on. So sounds like he was back to a pretty damn solid baseline after feeding in some stories in the dark multiverse by luring him there. And if not, I guess you just have to stand on the argument that like Mandrake was stupid and I don't think he's that guy. Mandrake's wildly intelligent. So I guess you could say he's stupid if you want, but like, damn, that's rough. Also, quick note really fast. People got to stop calling the World Forge the Source Forge to make it sound stronger than it is. This shit is way below the presence or source in terms of scaling, even though it's still a wildly impressive place with its 10th middle. And its canonical name is the World Forge. I don't know where people would be getting this Source Forge shit from. Argument 8. But no character can break the fictive membranes to get to meta places like Dill or the Overvoid. That's reserved for only the most powerful characters ever. Well, here's your unfortunate answer. That is not true. Earth-33, which does contain a fictive membrane, has been visited by Superboy Prime. It was also visited by Darkseid, President Superman, Dr. Multiverse, Alexander Luthor, and a whole host of other Black Lanterns, but they might have been there, I don't remember 100%. As for the Overvoid, we already established everyone back in answer one, like who exactly can wander through that, but let's do some more while we're at it. We got Merlin, uh, Duga Khan, White Lantern, Kyle Rayner, like, I mean, this isn't hard. Uh, for Nil, we'll even do them too. Uh, another realm that transcends all stories was traveled to by the entire Justice League here, the World Forger, the Monitor, and the characters from The Unexpected. Although all these places offer uh, metascaling in reference to everything below it, characters in DC are uniquely wildly powerful and can tr still traverse through all of them as they often do in modern stories. DC power creep and honestly just comic book power creep in general is genuinely just that strong. It's not even something that's unique to DC. Look at what's going on with Thor and Loki right now with the whole God of Stories thing, it, like inside the comics. You, you can't say that this is like the first time this has ever happened. Argument 9. Lubos, you idiot. Superman is hope personified. Why didn't you use the scaling we got inside Doomsday Clock to demonstrate how powerful all stories are inside DC, specifically Superman's? You're not wrong by saying that Superman is hope personified for DC, but I can't grant scaling for Superman's stories post the events of Final Crisis. Reality was entirely remade to give everyone a happy ending, no pun intended, due to the Miracle Machine, and reality and, and stories itself got a massive buff along with cosmology itself whenever it comes to DC. If Cass was to return in the modern day, he would be immeasurably stronger, because all stories in DC have gotten immeasurably stronger too. But since he was wounded beyond repair, I just can't grant Cosmic Armor Superman things beyond what I saw him demonstrate in his own story. If that makes you salty, then like, I don't know, I don't know what to do with you, but we're talking ultimate hypothetical versions of the character, not the literal versions that actually showed up in the story. But what did you guys think of my rebuttal to these criticisms? I'm trying to be as honest and as legitimate as possible. If you guys think that maybe I missed something or a large criticism, maybe something that you heard sharing the video around or something along those lines, definitely let me know. And if you haven't seen my cast video, definitely take the time to go and see it because it was a complete banger. Be sure to like and subscribe to both myself the entire Omni Lanterns crew down low, as well as any of my other homies. They're always floating around. Become a member on the channel. It's super easy. Click that link on my YouTube page, man. It's less than, I mean, a coffee a month, and you get to see all sorts of stuff before I even get to do it. And hopefully you guys enjoy some of the new content that I've got dropping in the near future. I am going to go on an absolute spree this month to see exactly what you guys are interested in as fans. And if this is something you like, make sure you let me know. Otherwise, series like this will end. With no further ado, we'll catch you next time, Lanterns. Later.